Yeah, back again. Um, we were discussing modularization and um, we kind of briefly said that you expose yourself for kind of richer opportunities to be copied if you do this. Of course, the, the less components you use, the, the easier it kind of is to to expose yourself to, to a competitive force which may kind of be devastating to your business. So, so it's when we discuss these concepts, it's kind of easy to, to get the feeling that this is good, so you should kind of overdose it, but not necessarily here either, okay? It's, uh, there's always a backside to everything. So, to, live to events and uh, modularization. Um, the local jazz festival has kind of introduced a concept which I call artist in residence. Do you know what that is? No. What it means is that they kind of hire a single artist and keep him or her for the whole week. And of course the idea is that this single artist then keeps continued concerts. Not a single one, but maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, every day for the whole week. That is modularization, isn't it? You kind of get a single model to produce different products, okay? So, uh, so, so that is a very good example of kind of using this technique in the event setting. Of course, again, the idea here is to achieve postponement, isn't it? To kind of adapt a possible change, uh, changing a possible uncertain consumer taste to different products at the lo very low cost centers. And, and as in most modularization cases, this is kind of, kind of cost efficient by itself, isn't it? Because it's probably more expensive per concert to hire, hire a single artist for a week and kind of ha having different artists for different days, okay? So you kind of get a cheaper but to make it work, of course, this artist must be very good, very popular. If it's kind of a second-class artist, it doesn't work. But given that, it could work. But again, it kind of has to be dosed in the correct amount. And of course, the, the problem here is kind of obvious, isn't it? Who should you hire? How many concerts should he, he, or, she, he or she give? Should it be one a day? Should it be any, um, every second day or whatever? Okay, these kind of decisions will have to be made. And of course, you gamble when you make these decisions, don't you? You, you? you take a shot. And if you look back on the few years they have done this, there's been popular artists and less popular artists. So it's not, uh, not given that it will work. But it's a, a classical example of uh, using modularization techniques in events. Okay. So now we di discussed just in time, we discussed postponement and we discussed modularization. These two last concepts, modularization and postponement, are kind of closely related. Modularization is a way to achieve postponement. But both postponement as well as just in time production is preferably aimed at market situations with high uncertainty. Because both these two techniques, they kind of add flexibility to your production, so you can kind of me easier meet uncertainty on the demand side. Uh, we try to conclude in the last hour that we would expect more of this in the future, so we'd probably see more flexibility than we have seen so far. The fact that you actually produce products through long supply chains in different locations and with customers everywhere, of course, kind of forces these things to happen. You, you kind of have to have a more flexible system, not only to kind of hit the consumer taste, but, but also to be able to make your own production environment work. If you design the product in the United States and produce it in China, then of course that imposes problems by itself, doesn't it? The distance between the design process and the production process should ideally be very short because you would kind of like perhaps to try to design your product in a way that it's easily manufactured instead of trickily manufactured and the more distance it is between where you produce it and where you kind of design it the more difficult you would expect it to be so it's not only flexibility related to meet customer demand but it's also kind of in-house or intra-flexibility if you like that is important to achieve in a modern uh, production environment. 
So, so these kind of stuff will be more important and what we probably will see on the research side here is is a more formalized version of what has kind of been done so far. Up to now there's a lot of discussion on this, there's far less discussion on how much to do of it. Okay. And that's typically what we deal with in logistics. Not whether it's sensible to do A or B, but kind of how much or where in between should we fit, kind of what, what amount should we do of this, how much should we do it, when should we do it. And, and these kind of decisions are, uh, at least to my knowledge, uh, very unresearched at this point in time. So I predict that uh, future log logistics research will be a lot on these topics, okay? Especially if you mix it with the supply chain management problems, then it becomes kind of uh, tricky to, to handle. <coughs> so I, I think we are kind of just at the break point now, or kind of seeing how modern production environments will, will evolve. Uh, Now, if you think about modern films, okay, what is the main problem in producing a modern film, would you say? You know, you know it's very costly, isn't it? It costs a lot to produce a high-budget Hollywood film. What is the main reason for these costs? Yeah, I know you don't know, so now, you're, now I ask you to guess, okay, what, what would you think? Are actors cheap? No, they are expensive, aren't they? And the more famous they are, the more expensive they are. Okay, so that is obviously one part of the cost. So why do you use actors? Not only are they expective, expensive, but they are unpleasant as well, aren't they? They don't show up when they should, they use drugs, they drink, they, are, they don't behave nicely. We have all, we have heard all, this, all these stories, haven't we? So why do you use them? Of course, you be because you believe you have to, okay? Of course, because they are good actors, okay? That is the main point. Now, could it be possible to get rid of the actors? How could you do that? Has anybody of you seen a film called Avatar? There is some actors there, isn't it? But there is not all of them are actors. Some are kind of just uh, imaginary products cons constructed on a computer. But I don't do that all the time. Why don't you construct the perfect actor, which acts very well, looks exactly as he or she should, shows up every morning, not with headaches, no problem, they do everything they should, every time, okay? That is the future, isn't it? Definitely, okay. So you would expect going for an actor profession is perhaps not a very good thing to do. Of course, today it's very profitable, tomorrow maybe not. This is kind of linked to kind of a way of computer game thinking, isn't it? Okay, if I can construct a computer game which is more engaging than a film, why should I then use actors in my film? Why can't I use the same kind of technology? And of course we see this coming now, don't we? Of course we have seen it in many years when it comes to kind of constructing the environment. So instead of going to the North Pole, Pole to film, you kind of make a studio and you try to kind of simulate what it would look like. And when you got these uh, top-notch computers, of course, you a whole new possibility opened up. Because you can, can construct these very realistic scenarios without actually filming them. Not only, you could also construct other scenarios which you can't film. Okay. You can construct any kind of world you would like. So these will have breakthrough changes on, on how we see the entertainment business, I'm fairly certain. So in, let's say 20 or 30 years from now it will be completely different. But still, and that's important, the need for lo logistics knowledge will be there, won't it? And it will be even more important than before. Okay. Because then again, it's if you kind of don't... So today you can say that Paramount Studios or Warner Brothers, they kind of have their artists, okay? And these other studios, they, they don't get these artists, okay? Because they're kind of contracted to these studios. So they construct a monopoly, okay? And then they produce some films, they sell a lot of films, of course, some of them they make money on, some of them they lose money on. Hopefully, in the long run, they make more money than they lose, okay? That, that's kind of how it should work. But uh, in a future world where you kind of don't You don't link your product to a physical actor. 
then there will be greater competition. That is kind of the basic idea on the film. But again, the ability to produce it cost efficient will become gradually more important. Because you can't reside on your monopoly advantage anymore. You'll have to be able to link your ability to produce it cheap and efficient, but still at the same quality as these others. That is what will make you win in the competition or lose. So the old way of doing things, what kind of having an ad ID, adding the production material, keeping a monopoly, wouldn't work anymore. So again, you're kind of back to the situation we discussed earlier in this course, that in the future, the ability to produce it efficiently is kind of what will decide the winner of the competition. And that is logistics, okay? That's what it is. Of course, only in the five last years we've seen a great change when it comes to distributing media. Okay. Still you see these game producers produce these discs. Okay. Do you think this will last? Of course not. Today, the, in the parallel, they're building up a system of kind of downloading software instead. Okay, of course, much cheaper, must, much more efficient. You don't need to produce these discs. You, there's labeling, there's a lot of production costs here. Get rid of it. Okay, and that's what's happening. Of course, this resides on technological change. Internet speeds must be adequate. Reli rel reliability on the speeds must be adequate. But when you reach that point, there will be no more physical products here. Everything goes straight in through your Wi-Fi. So there will be enormous changes in this area when, uh, in the years to come. And of course, we need to be prepared to, to tackle these changes. And in the long run, the only thing that can tackle these kind of changes is actually knowledge and skill, okay. on understanding how things work, how it's linked together, be able to build models which can produce efficient production, transportation and inventory if necessary. Of course, when you move into a situation, I would expect that uh, in 50 years, we don't, they don't, cars are not manufactured at the car manufacturer anymore. Then there is this kind of advanced 3D printers, She's on the corner, I can go down there, I just buy a recipe, I put the recipe in and the car comes out, okay? That seems efficient, doesn't it? That's downloading a car, isn't it? That's exactly what it is. Of course, in the long run, you would like to download everything, all kinds of products. And as long as you have a, a kind of machine which can manufacture a product, whether it's food or clothes or technological equipment, whatever, that would be a great possible enhancement for producers. Maybe they, they don't need to handle transport anymore. They can just focus on getting the recipe from the sales point to the consumer. So this is the kind of world we will meet in the future, I think. Luckily for you, you can't do this with Mick Jagger, can you? You still, you still can't produce Mick Jagger coming out of the printer, can you? You can maybe produce a replica. You can probably clone him in, if you do that in case there is no value in Mick Jagger anymore, is it? Because there's hundred thousands of him out there, so it doesn't matter. So you wouldn't do that. So in the, on the event side, you will still expect there to be potential to keep monopolies in the future. And it's very important for you that kind of want to specialize in this area, because there is still a possibility to, to, to keep a monopo monopo monopoly, to earn money. And of course, still, there is a, there is a potential in, in doing things more efficiently than before. But it's much nicer to work with events, isn't it? Because you don't have to be as efficient than in, in the manufacturing business. You can have a little bit more fun, can't you? That's nice, okay? So you have picked right, okay? I'm not sure the world is ready for you yet, but uh, time will see, okay? Okay, uh, a few words on chapter nine. I think we will continue this tomorrow, okay? Uh, there is a concept in logistics referred to as facility or, yeah, facility location theory. We have discussed this. Uh, uh, kind of the first logistics decisions you make are your facility location, okay? You need to decide where to put your factories, where should the inventories be, what kind of technology should they contain and how should you put this together to get the products out as efficient as possible. And it says here that the facility location is the problem of choosing and designing locations for production. 
Uh, generally, then, the history goes like this. Okay, we assume we have a set of possible locations. Now we think about events, then of course there is a set of possible event locations. Okay, this is typically not the case in a football league, but it's definitely the case for a world championship or a European championship or a Copa America event producer. Okay, they can decide. Okay, I would have matches in Stockholm, maybe in Malmö and so on. Okay, this option is there. But the local jazz festival have this have this option. There is more possible locations in this city than there is possible venues. So you, you can kind of pick, okay, maybe this year we should have a concert and you know perhaps you know next year they will put artificial grass on the stadium. But well, this opens up for a lot of more usage of the stadium in for instance the jazz festival or the Björnson festival or whatever, okay? And the main reason why you can't use these football grounds for Concerts is, of course, that you can, can destroy the grass, but if there is artificial grass, you don't destroy it. So that opens up new possibilities. <coughs> so we assume existence of some locations. Okay, there are some locations around, and, we, and in the simplest case, let's assume we want to pick a single location for a single event. Okay, so you have an artist, you want to find where should this artist play. Okay, that's uh, that seems simple. In addition, then we say, okay, there must be some attributes related to these possible locations. There is some costs, something is more cheap than other, there is some capacity, there is large locations and there is small options. There could be some quality, something is better than the other, nicer and so on. There could be transport distance. So there's a lot of attributes linked to each of these location possibilities. And of course, our, our job as an event arranger is to pick the correct location, isn't it? The best one. And there could be many dimensions here, okay? There's not only cost, uh, if, you, if you choose a cheap place, maybe the capacity is low, maybe the quality is low. However, if you, if you pick an expensive place, the quality is higher, maybe you can stuff more people in, and okay, okay? So that, that seems reasonable. There is some kind of obvious logic underlying these situations. Oh, sorry, no, I, I, I moved very fast here, didn't I? Yeah. 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 I, I seem to have missed... Uh, <laughs> this one should come later on, I think, okay? I, I've kind of mixed it in, in here. So, let's start by looking at a very simple situation, okay? Now, we assume that we want to construct what is referred to as an assignment model. So we, we need to assign something. And what we, we want to assign now is a single artist to this set of locations. Okay? We want to pick one of the locations and assign that artist to that. That's the meaning of this assignment. You kind of link up, link up. You think about speed dating, you know what that is? That is assignment, isn't it? There's a set of female and a set of male, and you want to assign females to male. Okay, by dating process. Okay, so assignment problems are often referred to as matching problems. So you kind of match people to each other. This could be, it could be love, it could be work, whatever. Okay. Here we kind of assign artists to locations. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to focus, in the simplest case, on a simple attri attribute. And in this case, we do it as simple as possible and just look at the cost attribute. Okay, so this is the only cost dimension we look at. And of course, before we start making any mathematical model, we should know the solution, don't we? Because if the only thing that's relevant for us is uh, how much things cost, and we have our artist, and we have a location 1 here and location 2 here, up to capital L locations, this one costs 10, this one costs 100, and all these other costs more than equal to 100, we know the solution, don't we? Because then we pick the cheapest and our problem is solved, isn't it? Given that we only look at the cost attribute. You agree? Yeah. If we want to formalize this in a mathematical model of the type we have done so far, we can do that easily. Then we need a binary variable. We need to have a variable which is 1 if the location i out in all possible locations is picked and 0 elsewhere. Because then we can construct this model here. If we take our binary variable and multiply it by the, 
cost of each location and add together, of course, then we get the cost function. It looks like this in this case. Delta 1 times C1 plus delta 2 times C2 plus up to delta L times CL if L is our final possible location. And if we add this constraint here, we secure that we only pick one location, don't we? Delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3 plus 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 should equal 1 means that we only pick one of the locations. There's only one binary which is allowed to be 1, all the others must be 0. So all possible combinations here, we kind of pick all possible combinations of locations. And given that we minimize this function, of course we pick the cheapest one. So this is an example on a mathematical model which from a list of different costs pick the lowest one. Okay? That's the only thing it does. And of course it's not necessary to have this model at all. Okay? So we just pick it. But if we start adding other constraints, for instance as in this case, as it says here, this model will simply pick the cheapest location. Not very interesting, obviously. You don't need a model to do that. But if we add a quality constraint, s for instance, we could say that each of these locations also has a quality to it. So it's not only costs now, there's also a quality here. So this cheap one has a low quality, this high one has tanning quality, okay? And then you start trading off, don't you, between these two dimensions. And you can do it in two ways. Either you can put quality in the objective, so that you want to kind of mix it here, make a direct trade-off here, or you can put it as a constraint as I've done here. So at least we need a certain quality. Okay? Then of course you just multiply again your binary with your quality value. You add together, say this should be larger than a certain amount of quality to, to secure that the quality demands are satisfied. Of course again, it's easy to solve this problem, isn't it? Because now we can do, we can solve the first problem if we can check, okay, is the solution of the first problem good enough here? Does it satisfy my quality constraint? If it does, then it's the optimal solution. If it doesn't, I throw it out and I resolve the problem. I keep on like that, okay? Then I, I get an algorithm to pick the optimal solution. But you can probably see that if you kind of make these more complex, add more and more quality or different kind of attributes to our locations, it gets kind of hard to see the solution. So in that case, if, if there's more, if you want to have a certain transport distance, you want to have a certain number of seats, you want to have quality, there's a lot of potential attributes you can put in here. You can get a lot of these constraints. And then in the long run, it gets hard to kind of imagine the solution. Then these tools can be nice to use. But still, I believe that this is just a starting point for the next model, okay? Which we kind of will spend some time on tomorrow, I think. So we, I think we, we are happy now for today. And tomorrow we will kind of continue with the next concept here, which is referred to as a more interesting problem. So uh, we will kind of end up with this type of model, the, the so-called classical assignment model. So we will spend a little time on that tomorrow and kind of a little time on the final chapter and then we kind of are finished when it comes to the formal training in this course. Then we have finished this textbook and we have kind of run through everything. There is a final chapter which we will talk about. But we want to spend more time today, I think. The reason is that I'm slightly busy this day. I need to do something. So is that okay with you? We will meet it tomorrow at 12.15. First then Oscar will give you some presentation. I don't really know what he wants to do. I think he... Maybe he wants to discuss the Swiss Switzerland trip. I don't know. But uh, he wanted some time. So it's probably sensible to, to meet up. And then I will finish up tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. <laughs>